Any of you interested tonight in the book of the Revelation? Would you turn with me to Revelation chapter 20 tonight? I'm going to tighten up. we got to have a biscuit meeting. <laughs> Lord knows we got to. We can't sacrifice the Word of God for the biscuits. No, sir, so I'm going to keep it reasonably brief. And uh, I've been I made aware we'll need to have a little meeting also after the service tonight, in addition to the biscuit detail. Revelation chapter 20. While this is something fresh on the minds of the world, I believe this would be a great time to use it. Revelation chapter 20, let's begin reading in verse 11. Chapter 20, verse 11, John the Revelator says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth I and the heaven fled away. There was found out no place for them. And listen to this. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books, that's plural, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Listen to this. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged out every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yes, this is the second death. Yes. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. Uh-huh. Yes, this might be a modern day and age of 2023. 20, but the Bible said, whosoever is not found written in the book of life right. was cast into the lake of fire. When you first open this up, we're introduced to a great white throne. And we see the one seated on the throne. Judgment day has finally rolled around. Let me say something tonight. I hope it won't get me in trouble. You might pay off a judge up here at the courthouse. You might pay off some modern day Matlock. Some modern day Perry Mason. Oh. You might get a, a, out of something. You might be guilty as the devil. But pardon my English, you ain't fooled anybody. That's right. Because one day, you're going to stand in front of that one. That's on the throne. Now if you're saved, I, I, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but if you're saved, you're not going to be at this throne. You'll be at the Bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. This one here is all the lost people. Death and hell delivers up the ones that are there. I heard something. I hate to tell you I was watching television the other day, but this was the news. And they marched a fellow in. I'll get into it in a minute. With a jumpsuit on. And they said, this is his final day in court. I want to preach on the final day in court. But I'm talking about the final days still yet to come. Everybody's going to stand in front of the judge. You listen to me. I know I'm getting ahead of myself again. I just get ahead of myself all the time. I'm glad my case has been settled out of court. Somebody say something. I don't have to go there. 
Amen. Let's look for a little bit tonight on the final day in court. Let's pray. I thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege tonight to be able to come back on the Sunday night at the house of God. Lord, I'm thankful that Gethsemane is still old-fashioned enough that we got church going on this evening. I thank you, God, for the songs, how our hearts have been lifted up, how we've been encouraged tonight. But God, for the little bit tonight, let us see this final day in court. You will and way. Father, we do pray. Uh, and we ask it tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and Lord, if there be anybody here tonight that's not already uh, had some pre-trial intervention, I ask God that tonight might be the time they might settle out of court. Speak to us. Have your will and way, Father. We pray uh, and we ask it all uh, in Jesus. Uh, in Jesus' uh, mighty name that we humbly pray. Uh, and all God's people said what? Amen. It may thank you. And you may be seated. Uh, you know, folks, uh, right here uh, in the Bible Belt, uh, right here uh, in good old South Carolina, we have been on the stage uh, all across America. And for a matter of fact, not just all across America, but over the whole world. Uh, and for the last six weeks, uh, down in Walterboro, South Carolina, they've had that uh, trial uh, for Alex Murdoch. Everybody knows up. I've never heard of anybody by that name for my life, but everybody in America knows who he is. I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did not do, but I'm glad that I know the judge, and the judge knows your secrets. Hey, let me tell you tonight, if I came down there and mentioned certain things to certain people, it scares some of you. Slap could down to death. If I mention one of your deep, dark secrets. Now, I don't know, but I'm telling you what. One of these days, everything that's ever been done. Hey, you better be glad tonight. Your sins are under the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Any sin that's not already been dealt with and under the blood, yeah. it's going to be brought out for everybody uh, to know your innermost secrets uh, and what you did uh, and what you didn't do. Uh, see, some judge uh, here on earth might make a mistake. Some jury might make a mistake, but I'm here to tell you tonight, Almighty God never makes a mistake. And one day it's going to be your final day in court. They marched Alex Murdoch in the other day wearing that jumpsuit and those pretty orange slippers. Jailhouse you. They marched him in and one of those announcers said, it's his final day in court. I got news for that announcer. That was not the final day in court. Right. So judge in South Carolina is not the final judge. Let me tell you, you might slip something by some judge down here. But if you're guilty and if your sins have not already been dealt with and under the blood of Jesus, it's coming out. And listen, don't take this wrong, but there's going to be hell to pay. And what I mean by that, there's a literal actual hell and they're cast into the lake of fire that burns with brimstone. Somebody say something tonight. I want you to know if you're saved, you won't go before the great white throne judgment. But you'll go before the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ you judge according are for your rewards. At the great white throne judgment, 
people that were too big headed that think they didn't need God. They thought they'd slip something by the Lord. One day they will have to stand before Him. What if tonight that we had all these screens? You are out drunk for everybody to say you had it. It's you. You people well bad. One of these days. God might say, roll the footage. And here you take in God's name. Now here's God on the throne. There you are, right in front of, and they got a recording of you taking God's name in vain, acting like an absolute heathen. Somebody say, oh, so, Brother Sam, you're scaring me tonight. Oh, I hope so. I, I hope I scare folks uh, completely to death. Let's so hope that you'll do some pre-trial intervention and settle your case uh, out of court uh, as you go to King Jesus uh, and let him to, uh, redeem you uh, and save you and write your name down in the Lamb's book of life. Final day in court, still God. Having said that tonight, I got seven things and I'll keep them brief. Let's see number one, the purpose. What is the purpose of having a final day in court? I want everybody to hear me tonight. Your destiny is determined in this life. Right. Not in a life on down the road. I, I'm going to say this looking right into the camera. <laughs> Don't give some greedy priest some money to pray for your loved ones <laughs> that have already died. Because when you leave this world, it's settled uh, right then and there. It is already determined. I'm here to tell you right now, folks, uh, the purpose uh, of the final day in court is to let it be known uh, that you were too full of yourself and wouldn't be full of God. You were so fun, so sure of yourself, you thought you had slipped something up by the Lord. Let me tell you, he knows uh, the number of hair uh, on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows your innermost thoughts. Uh, he knows what you're thinking right now. Uh, he knows what you thought last night. Uh, he knows every secret and everything. That ought to scare the living daylights out of you. And I'm here to tell you, it's all going to be brought out at the great white throne. Judgment of God. Let me show you John chapter 3. Pop up verse 17, 18. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Listen to this. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But him, but he that believeth not, are you hearing me tonight? Is condemned already. They're already on death row. The sentence just hasn't come down yet. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I got news for you tonight. You might as well go ahead and plead guilty. Some people maintain their innocence. And they might be of certain things. But when it comes time to stand before the real judge, you might as well go ahead and plead guilty right now. Let me tell you the best thing I ever did when I fell down on my knees before holy God, the great judge of glory. And I admitted to him that I was guilty. But one thing about it, he took the blood of his son, Lord Jesus, and washed my sins away. And my case was settled out of court. Amen. Somebody say, Amen. And so we see the purpose of this last day in court. Because it's determined in this life where you're headed. Keep your money. No need praying for grandma now. No need praying for daddy now. 
They've already left and they weren't saved. Don't fall to some scam. Somebody say, send us money and we'll pray for them. Listen, you're not going to pray anybody out of hell. Let me tell the Bible said there's a great gulf fix so they cannot pass. Between anybody that leaves this world lost, they're lost for eternity. But I'm glad that I can report to you tonight you leave this world saved. Every demon in hell cannot change it. I'm heaven bound when the hell are down. So we see, first, the purpose uh, of the final day in court. Let's see the place. Uh, pop up verse 11. I'll show you the place. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. See, a lot of people don't know the difference. The Bible speaks, and I've got ahead of myself. Can you believe that? <laughs> I said, there's the Bema seat. B-E-M-A. That's the judgment seat of Christ. Everybody at the judgment seat of Christ, they're saved people. It's already been settled while they're here in this life. And they're not up there trying to get saved then. They're at the judgment seat of Christ and being given rewards. Can I say to you tonight, God pays good interest. God pays better interest than the stock market or any bank. Somebody say amen. And folks, you'll be rewarded. Hey, the Lord said, you just give a cup of cold water to a thirsty person in my name. You're not going to lose your reward. But then, we're not talking about the judgment seat, the Bema seat. We're talking about the great white throne. There's even some gospel songs that somebody wrote that didn't have their theology right. The great white throne is when hell and death delivers up the ones that already went there. Because when they left this world lost, I, I got news for it, they went right to hell. But God being a just and a fair God, they gonna have their final day in court. They'll be brought back up and try to explain to God why they rejected the grace, the mercy, the love, and the free gift of, of salvation. Folks, I'm not going to heaven tonight because I'm good. I'm not going to heaven tonight because I'm not sin. I'm not going to heaven tonight because I'm a Baptist. I'm not going to heaven tonight because I'm an American. I'm going to heaven tonight because I'm washed in the rich, red, royal blood of the Lord Jesus. That's the only reason any of us will ever see the golden happenings. The Bema seat is all for rewards. I'd hate to stand there and twiddle my thumb when everybody else is getting a crown to cash at the feet of Jesus. But this great white throne those Bible said the face of the earth could be looking. They can't stand to look. You don't know why? Because he's thrice holy. We're told in the Bible when we're identified, he's identified and we're introduced. The Bible said the living creatures of heaven cry out, listen to this, holy, holy, holy. God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Then they do it over again and again and again and again for all of eternity. I'm glad that God I serve. He's not just holy. He's not holy, holy, but he's holy, holy, holy. There's holiness for God the Father, holiness for God the Son, and holiness for the Holy Ghost. Somebody say something. And we're Amen. Going to stand one day, either before the judgment seat or the great white throne judgment. The Bible said there was no place. There was no place found for. There's no purgatory. Listen to me, I'm looking in the camera. There's no purgatory. 
<laughs> Anybody try to sell you a false bill of goods? Look, when you leave this world, it's settled one way or another. Don't fall for it. After we see the purpose and the place, let's see the person. Verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. How many of you tonight believe in the Trinity? I do. I just mentioned the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But see, one day, I'm going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You know why? He shed His blood to forgive us. Wrote our name in what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. But here, they're not standing before what we call the second person of the Godhead. Godhead means three, Father, Son, and Spirit. We're going to stand before Christ, our Savior. But lost people, they're not going to stand in front of Christ because they rejected Him. They don't stand before the first person of the Godhead, who is Jehovah God, God the Father. Now wait a minute, every now and then I'll meet somebody and they'll say to me, and I understand what they're saying, they just don't know what they're saying. They say, well, Sam, boy, wouldn't it have been awesome to live back in David's day, or Moses' day, or Abraham's day? I said, are you crazy? <laughs> I know it's been awesome to see David and Moses and Abraham, but you touched the Ark of the Covenant. You struck dead. That's the old law of God. But folks, we're under the new covenant. There at that Passover, Jesus is celebrating right before they take him off to crucify. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And folks, we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But lost people stand before the first person of the Godhead. They're going to stand before Jehovah God. The one that demanded perfection. What a fool to reject Christ and have to stand before God like that. I'm not trying to be ugly, I'm just trying to be honest. Number four, let's see the people. He said, I saw the dead, but they're not dead anymore. Because dead people can't stand up. They're going to stand before God. But here are the people, the small and great. That doesn't mean skinny and fat. When it says small and great, he means the ordinary person, the common man, and the great meaning the presidents, the kings, the rulers that thought they were God and tried to override the Bible and override God. So it says the small and the great, that means the common man on the street, and the great meaning the big shots. These are the people, and they all stand before God. I'm on here to tell you tonight, every person alive stands at one or of the two judgments. Us that are saved for rewards, but those that are lost, to stand before Almighty God. Notice the procedure. The procedure. Notice this. And the books of plural were open. Everybody look this way. We take our Bible and we open up, as we did this morning, to the book of Matthew, or the book of Mark, or the book of Luke, or the book of John, right? We read about it. Let me tell you something in heaven. Joe, in heaven there's a book of Joe. In heaven there's a book of Greg. In heaven there's a book of Earl. There's even a book of Brandon. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
There's a book of day. There's a book of Linda. There's a book of Sherry. What I mean is, there's a book about every one of us. But the most important thing, they open up the book of life. The first book has everything about you. Where you were born. Where you live. How many people you cheated. What you did, it was wrong. But then if your name's in the Lamb's book of life, you're going to have a blank entry in your book. Because it's been blotted out by the blood of the Lord Jesus. But the procedure is this. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, plural, were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things written in the books. According to the words. There's a book of Ed. There's a book of Audrey. There's a book of Nellie. There's a book of Juanita. There's a book of Rhonda. There's a book with your name on it. This is, you see, the book of Matthew, the book of Mark. There's a book with your name on it in heaven. That's not your life story chronicled before God. But you know what? You can't help that. That book's there. Well, let me tell you what. You better make sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life. That's the one that determines our eternal destiny. Number six. <clears throat> See very quickly with me the punishment. I know this is a modern day and age, but the Bible's still the Bible. Next verse, please. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Look this way. A lot of these moron people that think they're smarter than God when there's some backslidden preacher that couldn't make it in a pulpit. He got, uh, he's out the ministry so he's writing books. And he's trying to tell you that hell is not fire. That hell is the grave. Oh, there's graves. But there's... And here he clarifies, he didn't just call it hell or God, you know. He calls it a lake of fire. Now I've been out at the lake here locally, and mister, it's a massive body of water. Hell is going to be a massive body of fire. You know why it's called Gehenna in the Bible? See, you've got to remember thousands of years ago in Jerusalem, they didn't have indoor plumbing. They didn't have trash pickup. So let me tell you, there's a place called Gehenna. It was a big hill at the back of Jerusalem that was a burning trash heap. And they'd take their trash and their human waste and dump it into that big hill, down that hill that was called Gehenna. So on one occasion, he refers to hell as Gehenna. You know what it is? A burning trash heap. I know that doesn't sound smooth and crude. And Dr. Doolittle up here at Goofball Institute won't like it because I said it was a lake of fire. But you know what? I'm not standing before Dr. Doolittle at Goofball Institute. One day we will stand before God and it said, if their name was not written in the book of life, they're cast into the lake of fire. I'm here to tell you tonight, if there's a heaven, and there is. But if there's a heaven, there's also a hell. Same Bible tells you about both. You can't pick one and reject the other. So I'm here to tell you the procedure was they saw if they were in the Lamb's book of life. After that, we see the punishment. They were cast, picked up and thrown into the lake of fire. Let that, let that settle in for just a minute. I think it do us good every now and then to try to picture, oh, we all love to picture heaven, don't we? 
We want to see mama and daddy again, and I do too. We want to see loved ones. We want to see mansions and gates of pearl and streets of gold. But you know what? Every now and then, we ought to be able to envision what God has saved us from. I am thankful that I'm not going to hell. I said tonight, we ought to be thankful that we're not going to hell. That's the punishment for sin. And guess what? We're all sinners. By right, every one of us ought to go there. That brings me to my last point with a lot of other things going on tonight. Let's see now the part that all these have started with the letter P. Now let's see the part that you know I heard about someone wrote to governor one time it was a mother. She said wrote to governor and said I know my son's guilty. I know he's done this and I know he's done that. But he served so much time and gave all these facts and figures. But she appealed to the heart of the governor. And she said, if you could find it in your heart to issue a pardon, I'm his mother and I don't have long to live. And that governor signed the pardon and let that boy leave prison. Let me tell you one better than that. We were condemned already. John Frey. But I'm glad that Jesus Christ paid the price. He called out on God the Father. He said, I'm dying. I, I'm dying on the cross so that they could be set free. And I'm like that song that said, Jesus, sign my pardon. This I fully know. He paid my price, about the price at Calvary with that crimson flow. I'm standing before you tonight telling you that my case was settled out of court. I don't have to go to the great white throne. It's already said. My name. What's that song? My name is written there. I'm glad tonight. Settled out of court. Washed in the blood. Folks, the only ones who stand before that great white throne are people who somehow, some way, found the ridiculous nerve to say no to a free gift. Brother Greg, this is nothing but a church bulletin, but for just a minute, just for just a second, I won't pretend tonight I have never seen a million dollar bill. Any of you got two or three of them in your back pocket? <laughs> if this were a million dollar bill and I held it out, Greg has still got to come and take it. But Greg, be hard headed. Come on, take this. I, I, I don't want it. Look, oh, come on. I want you to have it. It's a million. It's a, look, it's a million. And if he rejected it like that, you say, what's wrong with that fellow? Every angel of heaven is asking tonight, what's wrong with that person that won't accept the free gift of salvation? Take it, brother. All you've got to do is take out the crown what the whole of the Jesus is is out of I'm glad tonight Let's pray. Our Father God, tonight, Lord, we know we've been short, brief, but I pray that the main part of, of this message has gotten through. And Lord, that we'll understand the value of being settled out of court. And Lord, let us realize this is not the final day in court, whether it be at Anderson Courthouse or down at Walterboro or anywhere else. Let us realize, God, the final day in court is when we stand before you. Speak to our hearts. And Lord, if we are saved, let us appreciate it even more. And God, if we're not, settle to an old-fashioned altar to do business tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. As our musicians play tonight, would you stand, church officers, be the first to make your way to the altar. few quick moments, it's, it's right at 7 o'clock, we're still running actually early than what we normally do. Sister Marilyn here has got a whole battery of tests upcoming, and uh, they've asked if we would anoint her tonight and pray over her, and the Bible does say if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and Pray over them and anoint them with all the prayer of faith and save the sick. I'm going to ask our deacons, our trustees, our advisory council, any other preachers who would like to join us. And I don't have any new names for the prayer list tonight. God's not forgotten a one of the names. So we won't need to read that long list back over in its entirety. But pray for every name on the list. Our Father God, we just come right now praying that God should be with Maryland. Lord, we just pray that the power of God rests upon this sister. Lord, rebuke anything going on in her body right now. And I just pray, God, that every report is going to come back better than what she even thinks or what she may even expect and that everything would be fine and God that you're going to bless her with good health you're going to meet her every need so touch her right now with the power of God we do thank you Lord uh, that Jesus is the great physician have you with the way God and I commit it to you in the name of the Lord Jesus and Lord we pray for every name on the prayer list, those printed, those mentioned this morning, God meet the need of all your people. Have you willing way, bring healing and blessing and grace. We pray it, our Father, in Jesus, 
in Jesus mighty name. Oh, God's people said, Amen. Amen. Don't run off just yet unless you have to. Amen. Pray for Maryland. She's on the prayer list already. We'll get more information as uh, God might lead. Pray for her and for every name on the prayer list. Normally it's pastor. Uh, I'm moderator of all business meetings, but I'm going to defer tonight over to Brother Jeff, who is our deacon chairman. we got a deacon chairman, a trustee chairman, and advisory council chairman. And uh, tonight, I know my wife's still in here, and she, uh, she is oh, one of the grandbabies. I want my wife and myself and Steve and his wife and Scott and his wife and Tony and his wife, uh, the staff that work for the church, that if we would just go ahead and dismiss ourselves tonight. And now, uh, Brother Jeff, I want to invite you to come on around. And if you close the meeting either in prayer or call on someone to close, if you would. All right, the rest of us will make our way uh, out. Bless you. Give us a moment to get out. Brother, ain't you glad you say about a great Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh.